Hello Buckeye Nation. That was a much needed week off and I'm feeling tons better after that heart attack game against Notre Dame. We have quite the foe coming into Columbus this weekend in the Maryland Terrapins. And this is a game that I am keeping a wary eye on. Let's talk about that and more after the intro. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. If this is your first time here, my name is Lisa and I'm the gal behind this channel. I love the Ohio State Buckeyes and I tend to get just a little overexcited about their games each week. If you're watching this, I'm going to assume that you might love the Buckeyes just as much as I do. So thank you so much for tuning in. I started this channel as an outlet for my fandom and I have absolutely loved getting to know you guys and talking Buckeye football with you. Ohio Ohio State plays the Maryland Terrapins, also known as the Terps, this coming Saturday. And it's looking like it will be quite the matchup. Last year, you'll remember that the Terrapins kept the game closer than anyone predicted. And they were actually leading the game at halftime. The third quarter was when Ohio State really made up the points and pulled ahead. But the Terps had a fourth quarter push to try to come back. That final score last year was 43 to 30, which looks like a comfortable win, but I remember sweating it a bit as that game played out. Maryland is heading into this game undefeated. They've taken care of their business and won their first five games of the season against Towson, Charlotte, Virginia, Michigan State, and Indiana. While their victories have been lopsided, that isn't exactly the toughest schedule or anything. So Maryland remains a bit untested. We do have the common opponent in Indiana, which they beat handily this past weekend to the tune of 44 to 17. Overall, the general consensus that I've heard is that the overall talent level of the Terps is slightly lower this year than it was last year. However, they returned some key players on offense and their passing attack is still the strength of the team. They have already shown the ability to make quick scores in several of their games this year, which can pose a threat. Let's take a deeper look into this team. The Terrapins are led by head coach Mike Loxley, who has been the head coach since 2019. He's a native to the DC area and grew up as a Terps fan himself. He has quite a history at Maryland, serving in different positions there on three separate occasions. He started out as a running backs coach from 97 to 02, and then he had stops at Florida, Illinois, and New Mexico before heading back to Maryland in 2011 as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. He was named the interim head coach at Maryland in 2015. Then he decided to go to Alabama and he spent a few years there before stepping into the head coach position at Maryland. This season will be his 15th season total with the Terps, over those three separate stints. Under his leadership, Maryland has had two back-to-back -back winning seasons these past two years, which he topped off with two bowl wins. Coach Loxley is known for keeping several hourglasses in his office as a way to remind himself that time is our most precious commodity. Once it's gone, we don't get it back. He's created a culture at Maryland that prioritizes the mental health of his players, and he knows from personal experience how important it is after walking beside one of his sons who dealt with mental health challenges before he passed. If you have the time, look up the Father Time video about him because it's a truly moving story where he talks about that experience that has influenced his approach to coaching. I love that he is breaking down the stigma by openly sharing his story and talking about the struggles that his family has gone through. Being that we've just entered October, which is Depression Awareness Month and Mental Health Screening Month, I also want to do my part to help remove some of the stigma and talk about it. Depression is common, and the statistics say that we all know multiple people in our lives who are affected by it, whether they talk about it with us or not. It's often something that people can hide very well. However, one in five adults and one in six kids will be affected by it. And the best thing that you can do if you are dealing with depression or any other mental health burdens 
is to talk to a professional. You're not weak if you do that because mental health is a journey, not a destination. And support is out there so that you don't have to journey alone. I'm going to link several resources in the description for some self screeners, some hotlines, and a way to find professionals who can help if this is something that you are battling through. And I want you to remember again, you don't have to walk through this alone. Shifting back to this upcoming game, players at Maryland benefit from this added depth of care that Loxley has instilled into the football culture. And one of those is starting quarterback Talia Tunga. Vailoa. He's back for his fourth year there and is a fiery, tough competitor. Last year, Talia impressively became the all-time leader for passing touchdowns at Maryland. And then last weekend, he became the first Maryland quarterback to reach 9,000 career passing yards. Before he was a Terp, however, Talia started his college career at Alabama, but he ended up transferring because he wasn't given the opportunity to compete for the starting QB position and he and his family have a deep trust for Coach Loxley. He is a pass-first quarterback with a fast release and an accurate arm, but he does also have some wheels and he uses them when necessary. Leading the team in receiving yards so far is Caden Prather. He transferred to Maryland from West Virginia University, and he has made a steady contribution during all five of Maryland's games so far this season. Ty Felton is back this year, along with Jeshuan Jones, both who were receivers who made an impact in our game last year against them. They both had huge games against Indiana this past weekend with over 100 yards each, and each had a reception for over 40 yards. Ty also racked up three touchdowns in this game last weekend, and all within the first half of the game. Tight end Corey Deitches has the second most receiving yards, though that is mostly due to seeing a lot of action during games one and game three. Recently, his production has decreased, and when he played against Ohio State last year, he only logged one reception total. Running back Roman Hemby leads the team in rushing yards. Last year, Maryland struggled to get their run game going against Ohio State, and let's hope that the same thing happens this year. On the defensive side of the ball, Bo Braid is a safety to watch out for. Last year, he was one of their most impactful players, and this year is looking no different. He leads the team in tackles and has one interception for this season already. Leading the team with interceptions is cornerback Tarheeb Still, who already has three interceptions for this season and had a chance to go to the NFL last year, but decided to come back for his senior season. Another disruptive player on defense to keep our eyes on is linebacker Jaishan Barham. He's also back and he leads the team with two sacks. Maryland is not usually known for their defense and is ranked right around the middle of the pack for total defense. One thing they have been making a splash about this season though is turnovers caused. They are currently leading the Big Ten in forced turnovers. When you look at the rushing defense, however, Ohio State and Maryland's ranking are pretty comparable. Ohio State is currently ranked 37th and Maryland is ranked 48th, but the passing yards allowed ranking shows a wider gap. Maryland lands at 56th here, while Ohio State is ranked 5th. We saw the Buckeye pass defense get tested in that game that we had against Western Kentucky, and they passed with flying colors. I think this will be a harder test for them, but I have faith and I still have confidence that they will hold up. Talia is a talented quarterback who can sling that ball, but he's also already thrown three interceptions this season. And since he likes to air it out, I think this actually gives our secondary a better chance at making a play on the ball and causing some disruption like they did during that game against Western Kentucky. So I'm gonna be watching for that during this game. What are your thoughts going into the game? Go ahead, drop me a comment below with how you are feeling about this game. I learned my lesson against Notre Dame. So I'm feeling slightly nervous already because that Maryland game last year definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. Well, until Zach Harrison stepped up and laid the smack down. I think we'll get that dub in this game even if it's a roller coaster ride of the game. But I'm still nervous, no matter how it goes down. Let's enjoy this game against Maryland as we cheer on these Buckeyes. And with that, I'll see you on the other side of the game. Oh.